So the next uh, circuit I'm going to take a look at is an SCR circuit. And we'll talk a little bit about what an SCR is. Not many people really know about SCRs. Um, and there's two SCR circuits here. One controls a light bulb and one controls a motor. And this is the project that I decided to build. Number 319. And uh, instead of the motor, I had a motor in there, but it was difficult to film. It was difficult for you to see it rotate. So I replaced the motor with an LED so you can see if, if the uh, circuit is on or not. Otherwise, things look the same. So let's take a look at the um, actual circuit. And, oops, let me move this out of the way. Okay. Here we go. We have uh, batteries. It goes through a um, switch to the LED and then to the SCR and then back to ground. So the SCR is in the loop, so it's in series, so it acts like a switch or like a transistor. And then there's a control circuit over here that has plus V and it goes into a resistor. So once again, it's difficult for somebody to figure out what's really going on in the manual. It's better to actually draw it. So here we go. Zoom in a bit on this. Make sure I'm in focus. Uh, where's my focus? Here we go. There. Okay. So we have an LED and an SCR. So you can think of these two things as uh, diodes. That's how it's drawn. Diode and diode. So if this were just a regular diode, then you would just have current go through the LED and then through the diode to ground and the LED would light. But this is a silicon controlled rectifier. Now rectifier is an old name for a diode. Uh, back before there were diodes, there were things like selenium rectifiers, but they only allowed current to flow in one direction. And that's why the diode symbol is in the shape of an arrow. The current only flows in one direction. So silicon, because it's made out of silicon. Controlled, because it's got this funny other wire sticking off to the side and rectifier. So we, we're able to control this diode. Now what does controlling a diode mean? It means being able to turn the diode on and off, uh, which is kind of strange. Isn't that kind of what a transistor does? Um, but it is in this case a, uh, a diode. And the way it's going to control it is through a resistor, a 1k resistor to uh, plus V. So it seems kind of odd. It seems like if we were going to control this thing, we would pull this down low and that would cause the current to flow through this thing. So it's not really acting like a, a, a transistor. It's acting strangely. So if you go to the Wikipedia page on um, silicon-controlled rectifiers, let me back up here a bit. Okay. And it, it's a great, great little article on the, what these things are. And there are very strange four-layer PNPN um, diode. So it's like two diodes in series, a PN junction and then another PN junction. And the again, the symbol for it is this, anode, cathode, and gate. Um, and here's a picture of, of the actual uh, PN junctions inside. So there's one transistor, or one diode here and another diode here. And you can think of it as actually a diode in the middle, too, backwards. So it's almost like having uh, one diode here, one diode here, and one diode here. So a very, a very strange thing. So um, the strange thing is that you have this one diode in here backwards. And it's this NP junction. And if you have a diode in here, then nothing will ever flow. Nothing can go from plus to minus. Nothing can get through this thing. Unless this diode is on. If diodes are on, they conduct forwards and backwards as long as they're on. You see that a lot in RF switching. Uh, they'll have a DC bias on a junction to turn it on and then a 
capacitor on the input, capacitor on the output to let RF go through. So they use it as a, as a switch. And that's kind of what we're doing here is we're using this as a switch. So how do we turn this switch on? Well, we would need to put a plus and a minus across this diode. And we're going to do that by adding a plus voltage to the gate. If the gate is at a plus, it will then create an electron flow into this uh, diode and it will turn this thing on and then current will conduct through the rest of it. So that's sort of the way it works. It's sort of an odd thing. Um, once you get electrons flowing in this diode, then it kind of stays on um, as long as nothing perturbates it. And uh, if you want to do more homework, you can go take a look at this uh, VF junction uh, for SDRs. I don't want to do that in this uh, in this video, but let's see how it functions. All right, and let me turn the room lights off so we can see this LED turn on. So we're going to turn the power on and nothing happens. And then we're going to push this uh, button here, which will uh, apply a positive bias onto the gate of the SCR. And you can see that the LED came on now. This is a momentary switch. There's no longer current flowing into the gate or a voltage flowing into the gate. There's nothing on the gate. It's floating. Yet the LED stays on until we remove uh, the switch that operates this loop. So this is our main loop here. We turn it on, nothing happens. And then by applying a little bit of positive potential on the gate, it turns on and stays on. Um, so a very, a very odd, uh, very odd devices. You don't see a lot of them. Um, a lot of times you'll find them in power supplies as a crowbar circuit. So if something gets too high of a voltage, the, the uh, SCR will fire and it will crowbar the circuit and stop the power supply um, from, from doing anything bad to your circuit. Uh, you'll see it in that. A lot of times you'll see a variant of the SCR, which is called the TRIAC. The SCR only lets DC pass. The TRIAC allows AC to pass. So a lot of times you'll see it in uh, motor controllers, uh, dimming uh, circuits for lighting, and things like that. But this is the SCR. And uh, yeah, it's a fun circuit. Uh, nothing. A quick pulse and it turns on. Uh, no more power. No more power required.